Today, I have one mission, and that mission is to find the dungeon. And the journey begins in that direction. Let's get going. I believe we found the location, and now all I have to do is shoot one laser beam down, and we shall find it. And we yielded victory. All right. Now we get to spend the rest of my time here exploring this place to see if we can find chests that contain iridium ore. That's why I'm here. Some kids moved upstairs, so I, I have to deal with pounding and, and stomping and running about, but hopefully they're just visiting and not going to be living here permanently. Because, well, I hate children. Just kidding. Anyway, I'm going to end the clip here, and I shall see you once I find an iridium chest. Chest number two. Dang it! They say number three is the charm! Fourth chest for victory! Yay! While I'm stuck in this cobweb, let me go ahead and check this chest for a thomium sword. Hey, that's actually a nice switch up. And also these pendants, what are these? Amulet of Leaping. Okay, so that's increased jump, I presume. And then Earth. Amulet of Earth. I'm not sure what that does, but we shall find out soon enough. Boy, you know that Sonic Waffles guy on YouTube? Yeah, what about him? I heard he had really good drop rates in the dungeon. I think he got 10 Iridium Ore in a single chest. Really? Yeah. I guess not. Not today. Not today. Well, our adventures in the dungeon are now over simply because I could not find a single piece of Iridium, and I searched that place in and out. And let me be, sh let me be clear with this. Iridium ore does appear in dungeon chest, or according to NEI, so if it's if it's not in there, or if it's not in the drop table, I've been misled, and, and so have you, so you can be angry too. Anyway, I think the surefire way of me finding more Iridium is going to be looking for more of those Thomcraft node-looking things with uh, obsidian surrounding them, you know, the things that I've been cutting to every once in a while, because I find them at random, and I think they're a surefire way of finding Iridium, because that's how I found all other five of my iridium that I used in my advanced solar panels. So I think I'm going to go ahead and search for those and I'll be back once I either find them or we move on to something else because this is just getting too annoying. Finally I came upon one of these and let me see. Ooh, what are you doing? Is there another dungeon over there? Oh well I might have to check that out. And wow okay I need to figure out what these stupid dimlets do because this is all I'm getting now. Alright boys we found two of these right next to each other. Dang it, these stupid dimlets get out of here. You know what? I don't even need I don't even need any of the stuff. Ah, I don't want to take I don't want to leave it though. Ah, dang it. All right, I can leave iron. I can really leave like tin and stuff. I'll take the stuff that I I can't really generate instantly. All right, we'll leave that and go over here. And what do we get? Hey, more iridium. Yes, there we go. Four iridium ore. That's exactly what I needed and Binding agent. I don't know exactly what that does, but I'll take it anyway. And ring of protection. Hey! Okay, so we're actually getting some items that I, I actually care about, so uh, let's do it. Okay then, I think I think that's good. I'm going to head back now that I have the iridium, and we can continue with this episode. Hey, one more for the road. Why not? Ah, nothing in it. Oh well. Man, the random chest today. I apparently cannot get enough. Let me go ahead and research this. Ooh, sinister node. Alright. Exactly what I wanted. Check it out. Hey, more ready more. That's exactly what I want to see. And more of these, whatever those do. And dimlets. Hey, why not? Very good. Welcome back to our base of operations. I've got a few things to catch up on, and one thing is actually just correcting what I was doing in the last video. And, and I have to apologize. It was, it was very difficult trying to get this automation set up here, but I've actually figured out a solution to all of my problems. Um, but first, let me explain what was happening, and I, I can't explain why it was happening, but I can tell you what. Basically, this gate, whenever it's placed right next to the, the machine, whatever it may be, the electric furnace or whatever, it's looking at all of these as inventories, including these overclockers. So, this does actually work properly, as long as you don't have anything in your upgrade slots. So, if you're having the problem I did, then what you can do is get yourself one of these bad boys, ejector upgrades, and they're pretty simple to make. Um, they, oh, I actually, I actually just started up another program. Excuse me. They're pretty simple to make and uh, pretty easy to use as well. But there's the recipe, and what basically the way you use them is 
you have a single upgrade and when you right click on a machine or control right click or shift right click whichever your sneak key is it changes the direction of this arrow and this is the way it's going to eject each item from its inventory so automatically output to the east side because I clicked on the east side of the block and of course you can reset it back to its normal by clicking it on the side that it's already outputting to so like that but what you do is you set it to whatever side you need it to eject to and then place it in here and as that ejects it won't eject directly into a pipe so you have to put some kind of intermediate I chose shoots just because I had plenty of them you could make this a you know a gold chest or whatever so you have a very large uh, buffer zone here but nonetheless I chose these shoots just because it's very simple very easy to use and it looks pretty nice and then from there you can pump all of the items using your wood pipe and gate setup now you don't need to use the autarkic pulsers so you don't need to use these special gates you don't need to worry about the integration table you can use basic gates now and simply put items and inventory as your first slot and then redstone signal as your second slot for your basic gate and then whenever anything is placed in here ie let's say this fuel rod it's going to pump it out and then send it up and I have this section of iron pipes here that pumps this all along and then once it reaches the gold pipe which speeds everything up and places it into our chest so I've been doing a few things here including making copper plates and maybe if you're experienced in Feed the Beast you know exactly what I'm getting ready to do I'm getting ready to make a nuclear reactor and this is going to be a very big project because I'm going to need to, to get as much EU as possible in these next few episodes, so I'm going to make a bunch of neutron reflectors and then from these, the thick neutron reflectors right here. And that's going to be one of the most efficient ways to use my fuel, which is another thing that I've got to get working on. And to do that, I've made a thermal centrifuge. Right now, it's just making more stone dust. Oh, actually, I need to sleep. I need to sleep to get more energy. And actually, I need to go over and put coal inside my my generators over there because that also helps with energy but yeah I'm I'm right now making stone dust because I need to make CF powder because I need CF powder to make reinforced stone and basically I've got a lot of things to do before this nuclear reactor gets up and running so let me go ahead and get some of this coal out here I'm trying to get some supplemental energy and to do that I'm going to need a bunch of coal and I'm using all of the stuff that I've I've received from that quarry that you set up or that you saw me set up in the last episode and I it's actually done right now but I, I have plenty of coal left and oh you can see 10,000 marble right there nice and nice and beautiful I got a little bit over a stack of diamond which I already moved over to uh, my, my main chests and you can see absolutely filled with all this goodness ores items and a lot of crap that I've got to sort through but nonetheless we are are plugging away so what I'm gonna do now is show you exactly how we're going to work on this CF foam business because this is going to be really important it's very confusing I'd say um, simply put this is now I, I'd say one of the most convoluted process processes I've ever seen from where's that metal former there it is this is one of the most convoluted processes I've ever seen in Feed the Beast just because they've changed it to where you can't build reinforced stone. Uh, I know I've showed this before but if I type in reinforced stone it has no crafting recipe and the reason for that is that you need a CF sprayer, sprayer filled with CF powder um, which is difficult to to make in the first place because you need all of the stone dust and actually you can see right here we, we have all the stone dust and then we can take that down make more uh, or more CF powder from clay and sand and stone dust and then you place that stuff in water then you soak it up with the CF sprayer and then you can spray that onto iron scaffolds which is what I'm making now or hopefully I'm trying to make if I can extrude a few of ooh, give me those okay so it instantly ejected those iron parts alright this is the one bad thing about using the ejections because it automatically <laughs> it automatically takes it out and you can't collect it if you need it right away which is something I need anyway we'll go ahead actually we'll take that out and then we're going to roll it one more time no we need to extrude 
There we go. Here we go, and get iron fences. Another weird item in Feed the Beast. Alright, and from there we can just go ahead and throw the rest in there, because I don't think we need them. Do we? No, we need six of them, actually. Just to show you how this is going to work. So, now from here, we're going to make some iron scaffolds, oddly enough. Make 16 of those bad boys. And then we can fly down here to where we're going to be putting our nuclear reactor. Oh, and by the way, I've actually filled up most of my items with EU now, so I'm not, I'm not as broke as I once was, but still pretty energy deficient. Anyway, what we can do now that we have the CF sprayer and this iron scaffolding, I've never done this before. Remember in my last Feed the Beast series, you could actually make reinforced stone from advanced alloys and regular stone, I believe. But now, you have to spray the construction foam on it, and then from that, I believe, reinforced construction foam. Okay, yeah, yeah. So now, once that dries, it's going to turn into reinforced stone. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, oh, actually, no, wait. There is sand down here. You can actually speed up this drying process if you use sand. And I don't know if I need to, but just in case. Yes, there we go. Okay, so now you can place sand on it and it instantly dries up. And then from here, can I actually mine this? Yes, I can. Very good. And now we actually have reinforced stone that we can move around in place. So this is a very convoluted process as... Oh, oops. Don't do that as I've mentioned before, but now that we have all of the tools needed, I can go ahead and do all of this off camera. But I'm thinking of doing just a massive chamber of reinforced stone, and from there I can build sub chambers of more reinforced stone, and then put the nuclear reactor inside of that, because I'm gonna need a very safe chamber if I'm gonna have a nuclear reactor right underneath my base. We don't want any accidental detonations. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and build a large chamber out of iron scaffolds, and then we'll come back once we can spray it with foam. So I will see you guys once I'm done. I might as well show this one time, but here's the creation of the CF powder right here. And then, of course, the use of that is place it in water, and then you can collect this CF, or this construction foam liquid, I presume it's called? CF liquid? Whatever. You can collect it by right-clicking on it with the CF sprayer. I completely forgot that this is how iron scaffolding works, but all you have to do is left click on it and it instantly places down the block, which makes placing all this stuff super easy. Lemon squeezy. Okay, let me give you the rundown of what this is going to be. So starting off, we're going to have this entire thing walled off, so this isn't this is going to be put up right away just because I kind of wanted to wait to put in the front wall for uh, for just, you know, video purposes. I'm going to take a thumbnail of just this massive tube of reinforced stone. Anyway, so you walk in through the first reinforced door. You have to use buttons on these, um, or pressure plates, but nonetheless I wanted buttons. And then we've got a second uh, reinforced door here. So the front wall is going to be double walled with this little in-between layer. This might be air or water or uh, perhaps obsidian to give extra blast resistance, but basically since Everything else is going to have just, you know, thousands of meters of stone next to it. I don't really need double walls there. I think if we just have one wall of reinforced stone, once the blast beats that, then it'll be very minimal into the stone. But over here, I'm going to have, you know, other stuff here. I'm going to have you know, buildings, machines, wires, cables, everything. So a blast into here would actually be relatively devastating. And since it's all air, it could even reach up there. I, I don't know. I've never experienced blasts like that, but nonetheless, I don't want to risk it. Anyway, you walk in through here, through the double blast doors, and you'll see this is a, a template of what will be, but there'll be another uh, reinforced stone wall here, and this is actually going to be a chamber. This is going to be a square, and it's going to go up four high, and then of course this top here is going to be covered in reinforced stone. And this is going to have another blast door here, but this is going to be the uh, container for each nuclear reactor. So this is what the nuclear reactor looks like. It's the reactor, which will be the center block surrounded by uh, six chambers on each side, or one chamber on each side, but for a total of six. And then I can access it as I enter 
do all the stuff, put put in fuel, and then leave promptly. And I, I guess I have to figure out a way, like maybe a, a button on the floor here just to get out, but nonetheless. Anyway, we'll have uh, one reactor there, and then of course I can add more and more reactors as I dig this further back. And that's that's the great thing about this, this design, It's have um, is to have a a room where you can put multiple reactors rather than just having a single reactor and then just crowd it with reinforced stone. Anyway, I, I filled up everything with the scaffolding up to this height and that's going to leave a one block... Ooh, why am I lifting up? What the... Could you get out of here? Anyway, we're going to leave one block of air in between the nuclear reactor chambers and the ceiling. So I think that should be sufficient, but Let's get on with this spring and see what this does when we have a large plane of iron scaffolds. But we'll spray it and... Okay, so uh, what did we get out of there? Just about nine, I'd say, or ten in total. So that's not too bad. I, all I have to do is... Whoa! Okay, so I have to start from the edge because scaffolding is a little bit finicky to work with. Hmm. All right, so I have to start from the center area, I presume. Yeah, there we go. Scaffolding is a little bit finicky to work with because it has to be connected to some kind of grounding block, like this block right here. And then from there, it can only extend, I believe, five over the air. So it can only hang five blocks over, and that's why I had to put in this re um, this little beam here to support it. Anyway, let's go ahead and see if we can get some more spray work on. Um, I'm going to have this right there. Okay, see, as this turned into foam and that didn't get turned into foam, uh, it fell out because it had no support, so maybe I'll start one more block over, and that should that should be sufficient. Okay, and place that there, and do it again. All right, so we're getting we're getting this foam work, and ooh, are we empty already? Are you serious? Are you see? Wow. Okay, so I'm gonna need a lot more foam. I thought I had a sufficient amount, but but anyway, I have a, an infinity pool here, and then I should use buckets because these actually disappear when you use them, but this is how I've been making the foam, and apparently I need a lot more, so I need to go and collect more stone dust, that's what that means. But you can see the process here, it's pretty simple, all I have to do is just go around and, and fill in the rest of the gaps that didn't get filled in with the first spray over. Oh, I, I gotta stop doing stupid stuff like that. And then we'll spray that corner, oh, and one more down, oh, get sprayed, what? Can, oh, I forgot, we're out. Okay, well. Nonetheless, and a little bit on on the bottom side got sprayed here, so that's good. Oh, yeah, the construction foam fell down. That's nice. All right, then, so this is turning out pretty nicely. All I need to do is go and collect more stone dust so I can make more CF foam. And then we should come back in the next clip with an entire nuclear reactor chamber built. And this should be relatively bl blast-proof, if I could speak correctly today. I don't know. Something's, something's up. Anyway... I'll go ahead and get that CF powder created, and we'll cut back once all of that's done. See you guys in just a bit. In the meantime, we should definitely macerate these diamonds so I can get plenty of Energium dust to make more glass fiber cables. This is about to be so satisfying. Ah, yes. Ah. And we're finally back. I know, it's been forever, but, but don't worry. Well, actually, no, it's been like two seconds for you guys. But it's been forever for me, simply because this process is just far too convoluted to do quickly. And, I, I mean, I did get it done, clearly, you can see that. But, nonetheless, I think they should have stuck with the stone and advanced alloy recipe instead of the CF foam stupid creation stuff. Anyway, so I have the double blast door uh, installed. I don't have this place filled in right here, simply because uh, I've got this stuff here. And I kind of want to work out a way to get my energy line actually out there but nonetheless still two layers and then of course this door is surrounded uh, by reinforced stone but two layers here in the front to protect everything outside and the first chamber right here contains a nuclear reactor already I've already have all of the nuclear reactor and components set up which means six reactor chambers and then of course one nuclear reactor in the center and then of course all of that is surrounded by the stone with the only two entrances being the space in the front, so I can actually put stuff in it, which is pretty pretty useful. 
I'd say. And then of course this little bit on the side that I can extract energy from. And to do this I just use some glass fiber cable sticking out of the bottom. And I, I don't know if if this is the best way to do it. I might like put the, the cable up so I don't have um, cables out the side. But, but nonetheless I kind of wanted to put it here just because I'd rather have it blow that way if this thing did explode than up. And I will have to say there might be a nuclear reactor meltdown because I don't know what I'm doing yet. And in all honesty, with them changing recipes and how you handle like cooling and stuff, I really don't know if everything's the same uh, as as the last time I played. So we could have a meltdown here. It's a very real possibility. But nonetheless, we have all of this ready to go. All I have to do is put another layer here for blast protection. But then again, I might not even do that because... I mean, who cares if this stuff blows up? You know, if this stuff does blow up, then so be it. You know, I don't have to dig that out later. But, but nonetheless, I'm going to go ahead and try to get some nuclear fuel, and we might be able to put something in this this episode. But if this episode's too long, I might just cut it in the next clip. So I don't know exactly. Let me go ahead, edit up all this footage, and start on collecting all of the stuff I need. Now, actually, let me go ahead and show you what I need to do, because it's kind of important, actually. What I'll need to get is this enriched nuclear or enriched uranium nuclear fuel, and I need to put it inside of these fuel rods. And to get this, I need uranium, which I have, and these tiny piles of uranium, which I can get by centrifuging crushed uranium ore, and that's that's how you do it. Anyway, another thing that I need to do that, I actually already have this, and you probably saw it while I was up there last time, but nonetheless, let me get up there. Can I boost? No? Alright, it's actually faster to do it this way. Whatever. But you saw it the last time I was up here, probably. It's this orange suit over here. Make sure you have uh, scuba gear. That's what this is. Scuba gear, scuba helmet, a hazmat suit, hazmat suit leggings, and then rubber boots. Otherwise, when you handle uh, this ur uranium right here, this type in particular, um, you can carry the ingots and you'll be fine. But if you carry this type, you'll succumb to radiation sickness, and it's not pretty. So make sure you're wearing all of this rubber gear if you don't want to die. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and centrifuge all of this, and hopefully by the next episode, or the next clip rather, we're going to have a nuclear fuel rod. Let's get going. All right, here's the final test. I don't know what's going to happen, but hopefully nothing bad will. I'm going to go ahead and put on my hazmat suit because this is a dangerous job, you know? I mean, nuclear control, nuclear control is very important to the government. But no, like, it's some serious stuff. I've got my danger suit on, and I really don't know what's going to happen. I've What I've done is I've mimicked the setup that I originally had in my old Feed the Beast series, but things have changed. Things have changed a lot and I really don't know what's going to happen. But uh, this is a similar setup to what I had, except uh, not nearly as nice, because I was a little bit further along whenever I made it last time. But we've got a thick neutron reflectors right here, and this is going to be where we set this fuel rod. And then around that, we've got heat vents, and then heat exchangers to continue that spreading. Now, the thing is, I've got these coolant cells, and I'm not exactly sure what they're going to do for me here, but Nonetheless, I've got these to help absorb extra heat, and I'm going to go ahead and place this in, and hopefully we're going to get some kind of energy from this, but once again, I don't know what's going to happen. Hopefully it doesn't explode. Anyway, and I think, ah, what am I thinking? The last thing we need, <laughs> a very simple item, but one that you, you don't want to forget, because, hey, it's not going to work without it. A lever. All right, now let's try this. We forget an on switch. Oh, please work. A hey, 25 EU per tick. Core temperature zero. That's what I like to see. All right. Okay. Now this is good. This is good. Oh, and I also put this little cage lamp here. Isn't that nice? I'm gonna definitely see what other colors we have though, because I think I think a nice orange. I had orange in my last setup. I'm definitely going to like deck this out to make it look really awesome and very nuclear control like. But nonetheless, we have 0% temperature still. Everything looks pretty good. P 
please, wait, wait, cannot be used in fluid reactor. Please cool down in the EU reactor. Okay, well, this is the EU reactor. Okay, and we're getting a steady output of 25 EU per tick. Don't know what this, okay, and these really help. Okay, so these up the efficiency. These reflect the neutrons back into the fuel rod and continue the chain reaction, if you don't know how that works, but, but nonetheless. I also put up this temporary wall just until I figure out how exactly I'm going to seal all of this in. But nonetheless, this this should be filling up now. Yes, look at that, 28,000 already. So I'm going to go ahead and put a medium voltage transformer here and then run this all the way up. And this could actually be the supply of my medium voltage rail that I could spread all throughout my base. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to use this to supplement the MFE up there because even though this is a good amount of power, it's not a crazy amount. You know, these things can output several thousand EU per tick. So I think I'm going to go ahead and put this in, wait, wait, what is that, 48? All right, I'm just checking the, what exactly this, these numbers mean. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Okay, we got 1% there. Oh, and it went back down. All right, well, very good. You know, I think we're, we're barely getting warm here, and I'm going to keep an eye on this just in case. But nonetheless, I think we're just going to use this to supplement uh, what power we have now. And then, once again, I'm going to use this to collect more UU matter, to make more iridium, and then we can get a more dependent solar, uh, solar amount, solar energy, that word. And then we can come back here and make this even more efficient once we have the means to do so. But nonetheless, I think we're about out of time here, so I'm going to go ahead and take off my boots now and put some new ones on and end the episode here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Feed the Beast, and as always... Have a good one.